Welcome to another installment of the Mastercam Studio at Prototech. This exclusive video series features the exceptional functionality found only within Mastercam, the number one most widely used cam software in the world. Here's the topic of today's video. Lately, we've been receiving a lot of questions about creating 3D lathe tools in Mastercam. So today we're gonna to take a look at building a C6 Capto tool for a Akuma Maltus environment. Let's take a look. So I've already gone to ISCAR and downloaded the models for the tool in the insert. I'm gonna start the process by going into my lathe tool manager. I'm gonna right click and choose to create a 3D tool. My dialog opens up in my manager panel. I can add a name to my tool. I can move to the next tab in the manager. To start creating the components, as indicated by the icon there, I can right click and define a component. I'm going to start by building a holder. I can put a name on the holder. And I'm going to grab the step file I downloaded from MISCAR using the select model button. This model contains both the holder and the insert. So I need to select which of the models defines my holder. So I'm going to click on my holder and choose end selection. Now this shank on this holder is cylindrical. So I'm going to select cylindrical and I can use this button to select the diameter off the model. I move to my next page, my connections. I defined how this uh, holder is mounted to the machine. So I'm going to use the select plane button here. This allows me to select right off the tool. Now this particular tool, I basically want to select the face that is flush to the spindle. So I'm going to pick this face. In your stick tools, you would typically pick the back of the, the tool. If I need to make any adjustments at this stage, I can, but this is already centered and, and looks appropriate, so I can hit enter to keep the changes. And I can move on by completing this holder by hitting the green check. Now I want to define my insert. For this, I'm going to right click and choose define insert. Once again, I can name the insert. I open up the model again. These could be separate models, but in this case from ISCAR, I built an assembly so they're together in the same model. Similar to last time, I now need to, to select which solid defines my insert. So this time I choose the insert. I can define whether this is a left or right hand tool, and this is a right handed tool. I move on to my cutting definition. It wants to know the corner radius of the tool. So I'm gonna select the corner radius button and then I can pick off the face of the insert. This is a 15 thou radius. I move on to my mating tab and these two uh, parts are not in correct model space. Um, this is probably one of the trickier parts of the process I find it helpful to try to picture how this is going to be mounted in the machine to help align these two uh, models. Uh, occasionally on um, trickier models or you may find it helpful, uh, you can also open up the step files before starting this process and you can use your regular Mastercam tools to align the two pieces before starting and then you can skip this step. I'm going to do it in line in the process, so I'm going to kind of picture my, my tool is going to be like this when it goes into the spindle. So my insert is going to be like this when it's cutting. So the face of this insert then that mounts to the holder is the back face. I'm going to use the parallel function here. So I want to pick that mating face, that would be this back face here. 
and then when I'm cutting this edge, I can align to the edge on the holder. So I pick this edge of the insert, and now I gotta pick the matching geometries on the holder. So I come here, that, that face is gonna mount to this face on the holder, and this edge would define the matching edge. And now I've successfully mated the insert and the holder. It all looks aligned properly. So I move on to my setup. In this one, I define my cutting plane. Now, if I look at the preview on this, for stick tools, I usually can select that rectangular face there that's uh, normal to how the tool cuts. But with these capto tools, that's not, those are usually tapered faces and they're not in line with how the tool holder connects to the machine. So instead of selecting a plane off the model in this instance, I'm going to select one of the pre-existing name planes in Mastercam. I find it helpful here, I can click on the plane and I would want to pick a plane that has Z coming off normal to that face if this, if, if, you know, like if this was a stick tool, if the faces weren't tapered. So as I work my way down the list here, I get to right and that Z would come off that face. So I'm gonna select that one, I hit okay. And now this is the first stage where I have to be worried about how my tool is gonna to be orientated. So I'm gonna to go to an isometric view and with these capto tooling and the multitasking machines where my machine is going to, my head is going to be basically horizontal when it goes into tool change position. I want to define that tool and that orientation. I want it to be horizontal. And this that, that's going to come up in the next stage of this, but right now I do need to start worrying about how my tool is defined. Right now it's asking me insert direction. It wants the up direction of the insert. My tool is currently correct for this. That means you know I'm in isometric view here. I can see my insert. If I couldn't, if the part was flipped, I'd have to hit the opposite button. And here I can see how that well, once again, if I'm in isometric view, my insert isn't, it's down, it's not up to me. So for this tool, I leave it on the defined choice. Now I can move to my boundary and this gives you some options to choose where it's slicing the tool to figure out kind of the 2D portion of the tool. And uh, I find this one helpful to go into wireframe and to go to like a top view. I'm just looking that the two match up my boundary to my 3D tool and they look decent so I'm not going to adjust anything on this page. I just realized that I also missed one step on the previous page so I'm going to back up again to the previous page and when I pick that default plane it doesn't necessarily match where the tool sits. So what I want to look at here is I want to basically set this plane where my cut occurs, so right at the tip of this radius, and I can adjust that with this offset option. I hit my white arrow, and I just simply snap off the model there, and that just aligns it to I had a small shift there that was applied. So now I can go to the machine orientation, and this is the second stage where I have to worry about how this part is uh, going to sit in the machine. For stick tools, I usually set this up for how the tool is going to cut, but for the cap dough, I set it up for how the tool is going to be tool changed. So this is done in a horizontal position. So if I go to my top view, this is basically how the tool will look when it's put into the spindle with the insert up. It is going to be in the top turret. It's going to be it's defined here for the left spindle. Lastly, I define my tool center. I hit my little select tool center button and I pick the center off the radius of the tool. It's already properly defined as quadrant one. My cut and plunge direction are correct or I can adjust that here. The last thing I can do to make this tool more powerful when I'm cutting is I can define the tool clearance. This is mostly taken into effect when I'm plunging into material. So if I cursor over side clearance here, it kind of shows me what it's looking for. And this button right here, I can just select from a line right off the insert. So I select this bottom line and that defines my clearance angle there. 
And then I also basically kind of define how long that insert is with my height here. For this function, I'm going to use select two points. I'm going to pick the center point and the center point. And then I just repeat the process for the other side of the insert. So once again, I can check my preview, select from a line, select that edge of the insert, and once again, define the length of that. I'm going to use the two points. I'm picking my center points. Lastly, I can set up my cut data, what type of feed and speed I want to use. Uh, I can put more information about the tooling in here, the coolant, uh, roughing conditions, uh, but that will complete my tool creation process. I can green check out. And I green check one more time to complete the tool, but at this stage, I just want to show you a quick tip here. If you do need to come back and edit this tool, you gain access to editing the tool. We can get back to all the pages we just used and everything we just set up. If we made a mistake somewhere, we can get back to it. I just right click, for instance, on the holder and I can get back to the pages I used to set up the holder. Or I can right click on the insert and choose edit and I can get back to everything we just did with setting up the insert. But now I can green check, finish this tool. Now the tool is there and ready to be used by Mastercam. Now that we've finished creating our tool, let's take a look at it in action. So what I have here is uh, our Maltus machine simulation. And I have a few tool paths added to our part. And we can come in, it's gonna do some pinch turning here, but it's using our newly created uh, Capto C6 tool. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and we can take a quick look at it. So there's our 3D tool we just created. Once again, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure that you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you again next time.